starts with yourself, man. You got to start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's going to be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you want to do is go back to what made you confidence or, 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 or what gave you confidence is that happy spot. No. What gives you confidence, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own. Realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence is not being afraid. It's overcoming the fear. I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are gonna watch this. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care if I sit or start stuttering to you. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcome them every day, but facing them. And facing them, facing them pretty soon like this. You know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. That's where it's getting built. But people want to, and they want an easier answer. Yeah. There has to be an easier way. There's not. I'm sorry. I searched for it my entire life. <laughs> you cheated. I did. You lied. You I lied. I did everything. And I still felt empty. Mm-hmm. I coach a lot of people nowadays, billionaires, who call me on the phone and say, man, I'm still missing something. It's because they did what they were good at. And they had this beautiful family, two, two three houses, cars, everything. It has everything to work. On the outside looking in, like, my God, man, how can you be unhappy? I walk around with a backpack with all my stuff in it, right, and no right, car. Right. And I walk around, happiest person in the world. Have nothing, happy as hell. It's because I found out the whole key to life. It's not in all that have to face yourself. So many people live to be 100 years old and they die miserable having everything because they never examined. I call it my live autopsy. Never examined this. Happiness, peace, enlightenment, it's all up here, man. It's all up here. And when I start talking like this, people go, man, you know, I don't know. It's the truth, man. It's all up here. He's got to go and go and face it. Because the gateway to wisdom and the gateway to the development of personality, which is exactly the same thing, is precisely through the porthole portal that you do not want to climb through. And the reason for that is actually quite technical. This is a Jungian presupposition too, is that, well, there's a bunch of things about you that are underdeveloped and a lot of those things are because there's things you've avoided looking at because you don't want to look at them and there's parts of you you've avoided developing because it's hard for you to develop those parts and so it's it's by virtual necessity that what you need is where you don't want to look because that's where you've kept it there's a deep existential lesson in that in that your being is limited and and flawed and and fragile Um, you're like the genie which is genius in the little tiny in the little tiny uh, lamp, you know, this immense potential, but constrained in this tiny little living space, as Robin Williams said when he played the genie in Aladdin. But the fact that you have limitations means that the plot of your life is the overcoming of those limitations, and that if you didn't have limitations, well, there wouldn't be a plot, and maybe there would be no life. And so that's part of the reason why perhaps you have to accept the fact that you're flawed and insufficient and and live with it and consider it a precondition for being. You want to increase your confidence. I'll, I'll tell you what I think. What you do if you want to increase your confidence is you do jujitsu. You work out, you get stronger, you read, and you study, and you learn, and you get smarter. And And then you practice speaking and you practice speaking so that you can become more articulate and then you practice some more and then you you do hard things things that are challenging things that are tough and then you get tougher you don't quit that's what you do 
and then you stand up straight with your with your head high and your chin up and your chest out and at the same time you also stay humble because you don't know everything and there are people that are better than you are at some things people that are smarter than you and they're stronger than you and faster and more athletic than you and they have more money and they got better looks and they're funnier but all that is okay it's actually okay because there are things that are more important more important than being strong and smart and athletic more important than all those things things like loyalty honor will things like courage the courage to stand and the will to keep going and to do the right things for the right reasons and if you know if you know you won't give up and you know you won't give in and if you test yourself and you fail but you know you're gonna get back up again if you know that if you know that then you know that your character is strong and that's what matters and that right there is all the confidence One of the things psychologists have done for the last 20 years, especially the social psychologists, is push this idea of self-esteem. You should feel good about yourself. And I think, why would you tell someone 20 that? It's like, you should feel good about who you are. It's like, no, you shouldn't. Why should you feel good about who you are? It's like, you should feel good about who you could be. I'm not saying that people shouldn't have confidence, but like often you take young people, say they're 16 to 22, and they're not really feeling that good about who they are. Right. Because their life is chaotic and in disorder and they don't know where they're going and they don't know which way is up. You should, you should treat yourself as if you're valuable, especially in yes. potential. But you should concentrate on who you should become, especially if you're young. And so let's say you're miserable and nihilistic and chaotic and depressed and all of that now, and you have your reasons, you know, terrible parenting, abuse, all of those things. It's like, well, you should feel good about yourself. It's like, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's not the right message. Is that it's more like you should understand how much potential there is within you to set that straight. And then you should do everything you can to manifest that in the world and it will set it straight. And that's better than self-esteem. It's like, you're, you're in a crooked, horrible position. Okay, fine, there's a lot of suffering and pain associated with that. Yeah, you can't just feel good about that because it's not good, but you can do something about it. You can genuinely do something about it. And I think all the evidence suggests that that's the case. Yes. So I'm telling, telling young people, look, there's no matter how bad your situation is, I'm not gonna pretend it's okay. It's not okay. It's tragic tainted with malevolence and some people really get hurt by malevolent people like you know terribly hurt sometimes they never recover it's really awful but there's more to you than you think and if you stand up and face it with with a positive with a with a noble vision with discipline and intent you can go far farther to overcoming it than you can imagine and that's the principle upon which you should predicate your behavior say there's a bunch of things that you're afraid of that are in your way so you have some vision about who you want to be. Maybe you have to, you know, you want to be successful in your career. So you have to learn to talk in front of a group. It's like, okay, well, you're afraid of that. So no wonder you don't want to be humiliated. So, okay, so what do we do about that? Well, maybe we first get you to speak in front of one person and then three people, you know, for five minutes and then for 10 minutes, like graduated exposure to what you're afraid of. Voluntary graduated exposure to what you're afraid of is curative. And that's true. It works. The documentation is in. It's how people learn. So, so to, to, to tell people that if you confront the world forthrightly, if you speak the truth, and you expose yourself courageously to those things that you're afraid of, 
that your life will improve, and so will the life of people around you. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's as close to undeniable fact as we've, as we've got. And it also dovetails nicely with the underlying archetypal stories, the heroic stories. It's like, go out there, find the dragon, confront it. It's a dragon, it might eat you, it's dangerous. But it's worse to cower at home and wait for it to come and devour you. Go out there, confront it.